Hey everybody, we are here, paradise by the kitchen lights here at Wolfpack Ranch West, and we are going to pay tribute to the late, great meatloaf on today's episode by making the best meatloaf you're ever going to put in your mouth. Now, meatloaf was not just an ordinary singer, man. He was a rock and roll icon, so we can't just make an ordinary meatloaf. So we're going to elevate it Wolfpack style. So stay tuned on this meatloaf episode of Cooking with the Wolfpack. Hey guys, John back with Cooking with the Wolf Pack, and yes, today is our Meatloaf Tribute Edition. The great Meatloaf passed away, and we are going to make my favorite Meatloaf in honor of Meatloaf. I wonder how many times this episode I can say Meatloaf or make a cheesy Meatloaf reference. If I had better technology, we would have a Meatloaf counter up there. I know I'm at least at two, but let's see what goes on here. Okay, so this is actually a turkey Meatloaf. What? Trust me, a turkey meatloaf. Now, quick story, I made a turkey loaf, I called it back when the kids were young, and it was potentially the worst thing they may have ever put in their mouth. But I promise you, promise you, this is not that turkey loaf. This is turkey meatloaf. Now, you're going to start with ground turkey. I've got a pound and a half. I found the leanest ground turkey that I could find, and you're gonna hear why in just a minute. So I've got actually a 98% lean ground turkey. That's hard to find. Sometimes you can find 93.7. I found 98.2 today, so I'm using 98%. So I've got my turkey in here, my ground turkey. I've got three slices of white bread with the, with the uh, crust cut off, soaking in a half a cup of milk. This kind of formed this gelatinous blob that I'm gonna dump in here and it kind of forms a binder, right? With that binder, I add two eggs that I've already beaten. I'm gonna add a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. Now, I love Parmesan cheese, so if you wanna go a little bit more than a quarter cup, you go right ahead. I used right at a quarter cup. Next, you're gonna take some pancetta. I've got about three ounces. You can find this at your local grocery store. I just found a little uh, tub of it. Pancetta is just pork belly, right? It's cured, salt cured pork belly, um, just not with a smoke flavor to it. So it's not smoky like some bacons are. It's just fatty, porky goodness. And what we want to do is chop this up into just smaller sizes. If you can find sliced pancetta, you can do that. Take about six slices of it and then put it into little pieces like this and chop away. cloves of garlic. Now, I prefer to use the regular cloves, right? You get a, a head of garlic and you cut the cloves. This is one clove of garlic. Now, a lot of you like to use the the jarred garlic, and that's fine. I have a jar in my refrigerator, but I really prefer the fresh. So I'm going to give you, again, the easy Wolfpack way of doing this, so you don't have to worry about being scared of the garlic. So, look, you've got the garlic, right? You can see this is like a little like root kind of edge there. You can kind of see that. We're going to cut that off. So just cut that off like that. We're going to move him to the side. Now you're going to take him and you're going to put your knife flat. I love these chef knives. This is a Victorinox chef knife. I got this on Amazon. If you're looking for a good knife, this is a fantastic knife. It's nice and balanced. It's not overly expensive. I want to take the fat part of the knife Put it down on my garlic and smash. Now, you're going to take the end that you didn't cut off and just peel it away. See how easy that was? There's the peeling. There's the garlicky goodness. We're gonna put those over here because we're gonna chop it up here in just a minute. We'll take this little guy, same thing. If you smash it too hard, sometimes you obliterate it and it's hard to get it all off, but look how easy that was, right? For you slow learners out there like me, one more time, root, 
or attachment, whatever you want to call it, take that off. The, the bulb then will look like this, open there, close there. We're going to take our knife, smash it even just a little bit. And this piece will come right off. It's that simple. So you can use your jarred garlic if you want. What I prefer is for you to use fresh garlic. It's not that expensive, actually really inexpensive. Then you're just gonna chop it up very finely with your chef's knife. Nice, small little pieces. So you don't just get a big bite of garlic in your meatloaf, although who wouldn't like a big bite of garlic in their meatloaf? Chop that up fine. It's three heads, of, three cloves of garlic chopped up the easy wolf pack way. take our garlic that we just chopped up and half of an onion and we're going to dump it in there. I'm telling you, this is so good. Now you're going to notice I'm not using any of my Arca Sippy stuff on this. This is an Italian meatloaf and you know, there's a couple products that would be really good on this, but I'm not using anything. I'm not using anything from Flap, Flax 20, but I'm telling you, those are great products. So don't think I'm not a big proponent of those providers. I'm just making something that is so delish. You're, it's, I'm telling you, you're, 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 look, you're, you're not even going to understand how good this is until you try it. All right, quarter cup of ketchup. Sometimes we got to make sure that that, uh, all that ketchup gets out of our little ramekin here. I got these cheap little plastic ramekins, but that's cool because this is what I get my spices in, right? So uh, about a third of a cup of Italian breadcrumbs. So Italian breadcrumbs are breadcrumbs with a little bit of Italian seasoning on them. They also say buongiorno when they come out of the uh, uh, can. I got about a half of a teaspoon of oregano, oregano, or as Gordon Ramsay says, oregano. And then I've got about a half a cup of freshly chopped flat Italian parsley. And I am going to put that in there. Now this is going to make our loaf. And I'm telling you, it is... Fantastic. Now I know what you're saying to yourself. You're saying, um, John, why aren't you like in there with your hands? And I'm going to be in just a minute. What I just want to do is kind of fold some of the ingredients together because I don't want like all of the Italian parsley in one place. I don't want all of the onions in one place. And you see, I just kind of dumped them all in, right? So I'm just going to kind of fold that a little bit like that. And I am going to take the digits. Now, what I've done is I've started my oven at 400 degrees. We're gonna put this in at 400 degrees. So make sure you've got your oven going. I'm gonna be really messy here in just a minute. So I'm trying to tell you a little bit of stuff. So, all right, I'm gonna just fold this in. Now I'm using my rake method a little bit. I don't wanna overwork everything. I just wanna get it nice and formed together into a ball. Oh, that pancetta. The pancetta is gonna provide the fat. That's why I picked a lean turkey, right? Now we've got our pan sitting over here. We're gonna take our little ball of turkey goodness. And we're gonna put it right like this and we're gonna form like a, like a loaf, right? Kind of like a, probably like a five by eight loaf. Let me pull this over here so you can see it. Kind of like a five inches by eight inches, roughly. I'm not gonna measure it. If you wanna measure it, you go right ahead. Well, and I'll tell you, it's pretty. It's pretty because of the green fresh parsley, but I'm telling you, it's gonna be even prettier when I eat it. <laughs> All right, I got my loaf. What I'm gonna do is pop this in the oven at 400 for 15 minutes, 15 minutes. Then I'm gonna lower that to 325 for about 45 minutes, maybe 40 to about 40. I'm gonna check on my internal temperature of this to be 165. So for those of you who keep track, if I actually forget something in my recipe or not, and yes, there's one of you out there who made a bad comment on my YouTube page, that's okay. I digress. Make sure this sucker reaches 165 degrees. That might be at 40 minutes, might be at 45 minutes. You might need to go a little bit longer, but make sure it hits 165. Okay, it's going in. I'll see you back when we put our little ketchupy goodness glaze on it. So stay tuned.
right, so it's been 15 minutes. Let's grab this puppy out of the oven. We're gonna reduce the oven to 325. So let me grab this guy. We're gonna reduce our oven here to 325. I'm gonna open her up. Right oh, look at that. Just look at it going so far. Man, it is so good. And, and you know how a regular meatloaf would have like, you know, grease and oil dripping all over the place. This doesn't because it's that lean turkey. So I'm gonna grab some ketchup and I'm gonna just kind of paint this little guy like that. We're gonna just put a little ketchup glaze on the top of it. So it looks all pretty. You know, all, all food wants to be pretty, right? I don't know, I used about a quarter of a cup I'm gonna put a little bit more on because we need a little bit more on this side. Make sure you get the sides. Oh, hello, come back here. All right, here we go. This is, I, I wish I could eat this thing right now, but I can't because it's not up to 165 degrees. Far from it, actually. It's only been in there 15 minutes. So, I painted it with the ketchup all the way around. Looks good. Gotta make sure it looks all pretty. I'm gonna put this guy back in the oven. Again, I'm gonna check it after 40, look here. Objects in the rear view mirror closer than they appear. Who, another meatloaf reference. All right, so I'm gonna put this guy back in for 45 minutes. I'm gonna check it after 40, and then, oh God, I cannot wait to eat this thing. So now I'm praying for the end of time. To hurry up and arrive Because if I gotta wait another minute on this meatloaf I don't think I can really survive Alright Wolfpack fans, we are back with our Meatloaf Tribute Edition Hope you've enjoyed my terrible singing Never claimed that I could sing Just want to put that disclaimer right now Never claimed that I could sing But I love singing I'm the only one here in the house Here at Wolfpack Ranch West So I can sing all I want Alright, just a quick recap we made our loaf, threw in all the ingredients, made our loaf, put it on a pan, put it in a 400 degree oven for 15 minutes. Took it out, glazed with ketchup, put it back in a 325 degree oven. At 45 minutes, I checked it. It was still a little bit under. I want 165. Hear me, person who bitched at me last time. I didn't say that. 165. So put it back in, five minutes, temperature probe, 166. Nailed it. Now, we are going to cut into this. My favorite part of the meal is the taste, of course. Now, I like the end right here. I'm, I'm just that kind of heel-loving meatloaf guy. But here, I, 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 gotta, I gotta give you a close-up here. Look at that. Just look at that. Man, I cannot wait to bite into this. You know, my guess is, you know, about 66% of you are gonna love this. Hey, and two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> Another meatloaf reference for you. All right, I'm just gonna take a quick bite of this. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. It, I've never been to Italy, but I feel like I'm in Italy eating this Italian style turkey meatloaf. I just gotta, a bite of the pancetta, which is fantastic. Those herbs that just kind of make you feel nice and warm inside. And I'm telling you, I, I feel healthier already, right? Because this is turkey, not ground beef, which I love, don't get me wrong. But uh, you gotta go try this. In honor of our boy Meatloaf, you need to go try this this weekend. Don't hesitate, go try it. So, signing off. From Wolfpack Ranch West, in honor of our fallen friend Meatloaf, I hope you enjoy this Italian turkey meatloaf. Until next time. Ow!